It's take three. A very special episode of Scumbags. Two very special guests who uh, are gracious enough to t- spend their time telling me their story, their travels. So, basically, Basically, we're, uh, so what's the deal with these train, train hopping, or I mean, excuse me, these train robberies? What have you seen so far? So, basically, since we've been, um, moving through Stockton down to the L.A. area, there's been a huge surge of train robberies, um, like all through all through the lines through there and we've seen like quite a few people hitting the trains especially when we were going through like the bakersfield area it's been really strange i haven't seen i haven't seen something like that before and when did you first see all this start happening I guess it's just been the past couple of months that I've really been seeing it. And we just recently saw, um, like, news articles and stuff coming out about it. But it was really bad, like, about, like two weeks ago. We were sleeping by the tracks. We weren't, um, we weren't planning on leaving through there. We were planning on just taking transit down through the area. But... We saw like maybe three or four different groups of people that night go through and hit the trains coming. But we saw this one large group of people that pulled up in this uh, white vehicle, like a white truck with the orange lights on it, like Mm -hmm. you typically see in the yards. And they pulled up just to the front unit that stopped like right right in front of us, right where we were sleeping. And maybe four or five people hopped out of the truck, started pulling, pulling mail off of maybe like the car, like three or four cars back from the front on the mail train. And uh, just pulling boxes and boxes of shit off, throwing it in the back of the truck. And then they took a few of the boxes that they had taken off the, uh, bo- or like some of the cardboard boxes they took off the train car and fucking ran it up to the front unit and was like throwing it up to the front unit. And that was weird as fuck because that's, you know, where the conductor and the engineer are at. Oh. And, and what were you saying about being a, who were you saying was on strike? Uh, BNSF recently announced that they were going on strike and, like, officially brought it to, um, you know, the higher ups and shit. I'm not sure exactly what um, their reasoning for initiating the strike was, though. I think it was something about, like, the hours that they had been been given lately or something. But I know that, especially with the holiday season, they're fucking worked hard, dude. Like, everybody's sending mail, ordering shit online. So they have a lot to move. And move but it's an interesting... Work. What, it's an interesting coincidence that they go on strike and then there's all these robberies. It's, oh, just, yeah. it's just speculation. But it's something I haven't heard from any other media outlet that the B B N. What'd you call them again? What was that? Stand uh, for? BNSF. It's one of the Burlington train companies. Northern Santa Fe. Mm-hmm. And BNSF has been like known to be like the shittiest company to work for in America. Like, it's. Yeah, any BNSF worker that I've ever talked to basically fucking hates their job, but... So so these robberies could have been, could have been, speculation, inside job of some sort. Yeah, I mean, they're at least turning a blind eye to it, or, I mean, the fact that we saw people fucking taking these packages up to the front of the train and, like, pulling them onto the front unit where the workers are at, that's fucking weird, but... And they're always stopping in the same place like that. And, I mean, 
I know that they can't really stop any the anywhere they want to, but you would think that. And I mean, they have so they've been, been hitting the same. They, they've been hitting the same place more than once. Oh, definitely. We saw like a few groups of people that night, and there's. Where do you, like where would you say the heaviest hits are being taking place, or where would you see? The oh, honest? I have no clue, but where we saw it personally it was like. LA. Yeah, LA. LA is what we saw um, on the news too that they were mainly talking about. The Did LA you hear thing. anything through the grapevine of other train hoppers about what's going on? I mean, other kids are talking about it, but it's something we're not really big fans of because you know it fucks with what we're trying to do and puts us at risk to get in trouble and fucking. And I mean, people that don't know anything about trains other than how to get onto it and steal shit, you know, they can they can potentially, like, fuck with the train and, like, get people killed and get, like, fuck with the train, make it derail, whatever, fucking break air, whatever. Really? I mean, yeah. That's why they don't want people fucking with trains and getting on trains is because it's dangerous and fucking... And BNSF also has derailments all the time, and if they're hitting those trains, like, they don't, they can't really afford more, more damage. Fascinating. Thank you for, thank you for sharing your knowledge. You don't mind asking, how, how long have you been riding trains? I've been doing it for, like, Maybe four years now, off and on. Almost nine and a half to ten years. Nine and a half, ten years, four years. What's what's uh what's the craziest thing you've ever seen? Just off the top of your head. I don't know. I see a lot of wild shit because you know I live outside. Okay. <laughs> you ever seen Bigfoot or a UFO? Oh, dude! I've definitely. Right, so when, when SpaceX launched their satellites, yeah, I was actually on a train, and I had no fucking idea what that shit was. <laughs> Isn't that shit crazy looking or what? Yeah, dude, I was like looking up at it. We like, we like filmed it a little bit. It's, it looked crazy, but it was the SpaceX launching their settle satellites. Yeah, I've definitely okay. seen like. <laughs> yeah, it was wild, bro. So what would you say is the prettiest run through America if you're a train hopper? Are you going to recommend a trip? Where would you go? I mean, I'd go probably Dunsmere to Portland. is a beautiful ride. And also hitting the High Line. A lot of beautiful... What's the High Line? The High Line is uh, Spokane to Chicago. It's a beautiful ride, man. It's up through the northern states, up through Montana, North Dakota, into uh, Minnesota, and then into uh, um, Wisconsin, and then down into Chicago and Illinois. It's, it's a beautiful ride. Now, that's cool. I mean... What what compels you to live like this? Is it just, just something that you're born into, or it's fun? <laughs> well, I'm born into it, but it just uh, feels like what I should do. I it's feel awesome. like if I'm gonna be homeless, I should do it everywhere instead of staying in one spot. I mean, I've always wanted to see the country and, like, I don't know. I want to find the perfect place to, like, stay anywhere if I'm going to start, start staying somewhere. Have, you, have, have either one of you been outside of America? Yeah, I was a Navy brat, so, like, I lived in Guam for a little bit, went through Japan to get to Guam, and then come back to the States and you know I've done Hawaii and stuff but that's about it we're gonna try to hit um, Mexico and Canada at some point this year now 
No, I, I really appreciate you guys uh, sharing your story. That's, that's cool. Oh, yeah, no problem. You said something I haven't heard before. Uh, dirty kids. Mm-hmm. It's just like another term for like street kids or kids traveling around. Because we're kind of gross. We don't shower all the time. And we sleep in like dirt, piss our pants drunk. <laughs> Young house broken? Semi house broken. Working on it. <laughs> Working on it? <laughs> Well, I made it to the tile. <laughs> Just don't let me sleep on the couch. <laughs> Throw a tarp down first. Oh, yeah, dude. I got one on my pack. <laughs> I come with my own newspapers for the corner. So, I know this... this okay, so... It sounds like a strange question, but have you seen any anything with regards to government people running around? Or foreign people running around amongst like. I mean, government wise, I mean, I've seen the National Guard and shit. They like. Have you ever seen government people in, in, in the street kid crowds or. I mean, I'm not sure. I know there's definitely like, in regards to cops, there's definitely like undercover cops that will hang out and like. Hub areas and like pretend to be I've homeless seen, people. I've seen a lot of vets out here because they don't have anywhere to turn after coming back home. A lot of veterans? Yeah, I've seen a lot of that out here. A lot of PTSD guys come back and are all fucked up. Oh, yeah. Much. oh yeah, dude. And then, like, it's really unfortunate the, the way that veterans are like treated in regards to like benefits and stuff after they retire and a lot of those guys do come back fucked up because you know that they, they're conditioned in the military to be fucking to be like fucking machines you know and that'll that'll fuck somebody up really bad really easily so you see a bunch of just crazy fucking vets that come back fucked up and can't come back like all the way there. <clears throat> I don't know. So where where would you say so far has been one of the best places to live outside or where you feel safe or feel good or nice places to live? Like if if I was homeless, where would you recommend I go? Dude, I feel like the South is a good place to be homeless. And like I don't know, but that's just my preference. Midwest, I don't mess with you much there. But it's cold, huh? The winter? Oh. It is cold in the yeah. winter. That's why we're not there right now. <laughs> well, it forces every. I notice it just, just, just as a San Diegan, I notice that a lot of people from all over the world wind up here in San Diego during the winter. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's warm and cozy, and like. The only thing that Cali kind of sucks for is just the amount of, like, like you said, other homeless people, like, it's, it, like, messes with money, and, like, it, it also just sucks because a lot of Cali home bums are crazy. <laughs> yeah, but the Southwest and the South during the wintertime, wonderful, but any other time of year, the Midwest, wonderful place to be. But don't no one go moving to the Midwest to be homeless. You're gonna fuck up my shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were joking. Go to uh, Florida. I know. I know somebody in Florida right now, and he says it's warm down there. Dude, I was in um. And the <laughs> I was in Pensacola last February and it was cold as shit. What's the coldest you ever been train hopping? Uh, I feel like personally, like the ride we took recently through the Tehachapi Loop up in uh, just north of Bakersfield, it was like the middle of the night 
and uh, it was so cold, and we were on a on an IM, like one of the mail trains, and it was going like fucking 80 through the mountains. There was snow on the ground around us. It was, it was just the wind chill that I've been, caught me. I've been in Montana twice and made winter up in yeah, trains. So. Oof. <laughs> Cold steel. <laughs> oh my god, I can only imagine, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Hot, man. We got good sleep I get cold though. just thinking about that. Yeah. Anything you recommend as far as work clothing or survival attire? Uh, yeah. fucking bibs. Like the insulated bibs like he's wearing. Get you a pair of those. Get a good thick tarp and a cold winter sleep. Like a cold weather sleeping bag. Like if you can get one of those nice like negative jacket. degree. Yeah. Nice winter jacket. What about your Socks. shoes? You guys... Have any particular? No steel toes. Get like hiking boots, even though like combat boots look cool. Hiking boots keep your feet comfy. Anything. Something anything that ain't steel toe though. Yeah. Because yeah, steel, steel toe, toe you can uh, get frostbite on your toes up in the north in the winter. Or get them it makes sense. Off. <laughs> or get chopped off. Yeah, do you drop something heavy on your foot, get it ran over? Oh, well, I'll wear steel toes any time other than winter, but... They, they're a bitch to hike it, too, too heavy. Oh, yeah, during the winter, you're going to freeze your toes off. <laughs> it makes sense. Metal will just conduct the heat away from your toes. Even something I like about his boots is there's a zipper on the side, so they're easy to slip off. How do you take a shit if you need to take a shit on the train? Uh, you don't take a shit on the train, or you shit in a bag and throw it at the bull when you go through the yard. <laughs> <laughs> How do you piss? Oh, you right just off piss off the, the side. You know, or sometimes if you're on like a grainer, like one of the grain cars on a junk train, there's little holes on the porch. No, just piss off the side. No, pee in the hole. It's like a little, it's like a, the toilets that they have in Japan, but they're just holes in the ground. Yeah. Just, just what, if, what if your dude just pissed off the side? Or sure, just, sure, sure. Or just piss <laughs> your pants and Anyone. don't tell all your friends <laughs> until it leaks over to them. You know, there's options. It's just... So, uh, how do you how do you navigate? I mean, what's how do you find your way around? How do you know which which train to hop, which one not to hop? I mean, I mean, do you just have you ever gotten lost? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah the, if you if you talk to older train riders, it's like everyone's got some knowledge on something, and, you know. There's certain daily trains that take you certain places, and then like other ones you just get on and hope it's going to take you to the right place. And then there's some yards that literally only go from one place to the other. It's just an in-between stop, so, you know. Yeah, and I mean the tracks don't ever move, so it's like if it's going, it's going in one direction, you know where it's you know where it's going. You just might not know where it's stopping, but there's ways to find out. I mean, out. you might know where it's going, but like there's split offs, random everything for yeah, I mean there's no way to really know where you're going, you just hope for the best. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. And I mean you can hang out and kinda of watch, like if you just pay attention, like and I mean like He's been doing this for a while. He's gotten on a lot of trains, and, like, it's it's a learning process. Do you get on while they're moving or only when they're stopped? I mean, I can get on while they're moving. It's not smart, but you can but do it. But I would recommend no one else do that. Yeah. yeah, don't do it. But Is there any technique that you use to doing that? Um, I move my feet and I grab on. <laughs> it sounds sketchy as hell, but have you ever seen anybody get killed or die from that shit? 
I mean, about a year ago when I was in uh, Yuma, Arizona, a guy got killed walking in front of a train. He got decapitated. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I didn't see it happen. I didn't even just know your legs. Sick. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know he was there. But yeah, he got decapitated. Decapitated. Yep. Yeah, I'm no. He tripped up. He tripped over on one track and went. Is there is there any rules in your in your in your any rules any any anything that. One should know right off the day or the start this. Don't stick your dick in the knuckle. Don't step on the knuckle. Don't step on the knuckle. Don't step on the knuckle. And don't die. And don't die. So, but don't step on the knuckle. That's like the number one biggest rule. And three points of contact at all times until you're good at stuff. And then you can get two points. Shut up, bitch. Don't step on the knuckle and don't die. Yeah, and don't fucking hop trains. Don't do this at home, kids. Yeah, don't hop trains. People don't don't really do that anymore. We don't have a train at home. Because you probably don't have a train at home. But thanks for sharing that about BNSF and the strike. That's something that we don't hear about a lot of. And and if it, from what I've seen on the on the news footage, it looked like there was a lot, a lot of shit happened. Like, and also in regards to BNSF, Warren Buffett, our BNSF poppy, he drives a what is it that he drives? We recently learned it's not a Subaru. It's a fucking. It's a dumb car. Warren Buffett drives a dumb car. I thought he just rode trains around, but I guess he's a poser. Fascinating. BNSF stands for Buffett Never Stops Fucking. Buffett Never Stops Fucking? Yep. <laughs> well, that was a great interview. I think we'll leave it at that. <laughs> All Thank right. you. Sick. Thank you for interviewing us. Yeah, thanks for uh, sharing your time. No problem. Any other last words from the audience?